Hi there and welcome back to the channel. So it's been a minute since I made a video, but uh, I've been working hard on the drum part, you know, trying to get it ready. And uh, I, it was kind of complicated for me. I'm not like the greatest drummer or anything, and I'm basically just, you know, playing on my own stuff. It's not like I'm trying to be a drummer. Uh, but this song had some complications that have made it, you know, take a little longer to work it up. But early on, I made a video, you know, on my channel. I've only been doing this for, I don't know, like a couple of years now uh, of actually making videos. And early on, I did some Zoom videos where I showed the mic, you know, or at least the way I mic drums. And uh, so I wanted to show it again because um, it's been a while. People might not ever find that video, you know, unless you go digging. And I don't know how often these, I don't think these videos get, you know, pushed by YouTube much. So unless you are really searching for it, um, you might not see it. So I'm hoping maybe this one will get seen by a few people who own the Zoom and bought the Zoom and are trying to, you know, figure out how to use it uh, the most effective way and get the most out of it. Because I think it's an amazing tool, you know, uh, for the cost, that, for what I, I paid $200 for mine. And uh, it gets surprisingly good sound that I'm very happy with because I like to work with, you know, the least amount of technical difficulties as possible and the Zoom makes it really simple. All right, so if you want professional drums, like you want some real drum tones, you got to, you know, put some effort into it. And uh, when I first started doing drums, I uh, tried to mic the whole kit, you know, do all this different stuff. And I kept running into phase issues. And you had to have a lot of mics to do that. And I only really own, I guess I really only own four proper studio grade microphones. And they're not even like studio grade. They're, I mean, they're good microphones, but they're budget microphones. You know, it's not like I have Neumanns and vintage RCAs or anything. Uh, but they're very good uh, microphones. So you'd have to have a lot of microphones and you know, you'd have to know what you're doing and everything. So I'm gonna show you a pretty simple way pretty inexpensive way if you're trying to acquire equipment and stuff like that to get good drum tones with the Zoom that sound natural and acoustic and rich uh, on a low budget. You know, something that you can achieve simply uh, without a lot of know-how or expensive gear. All right, so we'll start it off with the bass drum. What I do with the bass drum is I'm going to uh, use this microphone here. Let me get the paperwork for it. It's called the KBM 4112. And I think I paid 38 bucks for it, but this this mic is probably as much as like 75 bucks now. I don't know. Uh, and I don't even know if it exists anymore, if it's, it's still in production. But it's the KBM 4112 CAD uh, microphone. And it's a bass mic. You know, it's made to capture a bass drum, a bass guitar. So it's bass, its frequencies are uh, attuned for bass. And I like it, it's good. I'm sure there's zillions of better ones out there that have way better frequency response and would give me so much more. But I have this one and it works. And so I'm gonna take this one with a long mic cable and I'm gonna run it to the fourth input on the Zoom. Very simple, XLR cable. You're gonna plug it in, the male version uh, I mean, the female version goes into the mic, and the male version, the, veil, the male end of it goes into the Zoom, right into number four. And as far as mic placement goes, I've done a lot of experimenting, and uh, what I like to do is put this this mic as far away as like a full drumstick, uh, maybe like ten inches, something like that. I don't know why. It kind of serves as a boundary mic, which means you know you get a microphone on the outside edge and it kind of captures more tone um, and it also keeps from peaking you know like the bass drum is not getting nailed because you have some distance here and I don't know I, I picked this up uh, from uh, uh, the engineer Steve Albini he does the same thing with uh, mics on the, on the cabinet They're like eight inches out get a little more air as opposed to like you know putting the mic right on the grill same idea here instead of going inside a hole no hole here this is like the John Bonham sealed bass drum idea I got a, a strip, a felt strip attached to the head between the head and the and the rim on both sides. That's the only thing you use to deaden the tone. But I love the way this bass drum sounds. It's amazing. And uh, it sounds great. And I don't use any compression because the zoom really helps you with that. Uh, this could be a nightmare if you're recording this on tape. You'd have to have compression and know what you're doing. Otherwise, every time the guy hits the bass drum, it's pegging. Same thing with bass guitar. It's tough to record bass. you got to know what you're doing. All right, so 
we're going to come out of here, go into number four. Then, over here, we have these overheads. We've got one here, and you probably can't see it because it's behind the toms, one back there. And it's, I guess it's almost like a side mic, not like a super duper overhead, but it is overhead, and this one definitely is. And it's right over the snare. And the way that works is I just take two bass, I'll show you when I get over there, two drumsticks, one atop the other, and I just measure from the middle of the snare to the middle of the mic. And that's where I place it. Then I kind of take the whole contraption and move it over to make sure that, we have, that we're equal distance. So picture the middle of the snare going up to that microphone, and then the middle of the snare going to that microphone. It's something like this, you know? And you want that to be equal distance. So if you were going here, two drumsticks, and here it was only one and a half drumsticks, that microphone is going to get the sound before this one does, and it's going to create a phase, which is going to suck the good tone out of one of them, and they're going to sort of hate each other as you go up, as you push, try to push one up, the other one goes down and then so back and forth, and then you pull one down and push one up, and you go, oh, they're totally out of phase, so one of them needs to go to even work right, and that's not your goal. Your goal was to record two really good clean signals. And you can also pan them out to create a bigger stereo spread. So I'll have this one kind of panned left, yeah, because that's my left. And then I'll have this one panned right, because it's my right. That's how I mic drums. I think of it as being like left, right, bass drum, snare. So two overhead mics, and that would be considered the recorder man style of miking if you were to just stop there. You could put that, if you had a light kind of jazz thing going or a light pop thing, you know, like acoustic or singer-songwriter or folky or just whatever. It's not like heavy-duty, you know, drums and you don't need a major snare presence. That can work. Just those two mics. You have that kind of pointed towards the bass drum. This directly over the snare, two sticks high. That two sticks out. Boom. Then, but, let's say we have recorder man and we added in this bass drum. Well, what I like to do is one more thing to Recorder Man, uh, and that is to add in the snare drum mic. And that makes it more like the Glenn Johns method. Glenn Johns recorded Led Zeppelin II, Led Zeppelin IV. Uh, most of the Led Zeppelins, he and his brother, I think maybe his brother took over when they got all the way to Physical Graffiti. I can't remember. That's when they went Swan Song and they weren't on uh, Atlantic anymore. I mean, they, Atlantic was distributing it, but Jimmy had taken over full control of the band. Okay. Um, so now, we have this mic, which is aimed like three inches out from the rim of the snare. And this is a large diaphragm condenser, but you could use any mic here. And not every, you may not be able to use any microphone that's like a large diaphragm in that position, because a lot of drummers would just hit too hard. Like I tried to mic, use this mic on John, our drummer, and man, he just blew this thing up. I had to rethink everything, because he, he's like a... It's hard. Okay, so this thing here is the AKG P220. It doesn't have any paperwork in here, but I've just remembered the name of it. And it's a large diaphragm condenser, and it sounds great. Uh, it's got a little funky upper mid thing, so sometimes when I'm recording vocals, I have to work around that. But for snare, I've been really happy. And I'm going to go minus dB, uh, minus 20 dB on the attenuating pad that's on there, so that's going to cut down some of the signal as well and then I've got it running this one has to have phantom power and a note to keep in mind with the zoom I don't know what it is maybe somebody out there can do it but I have not been able to get good phantom power out of the zoom it just doesn't run good and clean so the mic that would need phantom power just doesn't seem to provide ample signal without going to my rain MS1B with the phantom power engaged um, so that's kind of how that works. Um, you have to have that. Now, if you had a dy dynamic microphone like a SM57 or a SM58 or like a SM7, like a much better microphone, I actually don't like 57s or 58s in the studio. They're fine live, but I don't like using them typically. Uh, they just have a limited sound. Um, it's a little trashy. So, um, but you're, a lot of people love recording with 57s. The point being it could be dynamic, uh, whatever you want to use, condenser, cardioid, 
uh, just a mic about three inches away from the rim of the snare. And this time I've got it up high, kind of like down. Usually I have it like straight on to the snare drum. This time I'm trying doing this like a 45 degree angle thing. Uh, just experiment and see. I might go back to the other way. Okay, so that's the four mics. We've got two overheads, which, which would be like Recorder Man or Glenn John's method, including bass drum, which I always keep out here on a sealed head, no hole. Uh, and then I've got this mic three inches uh, away from the snare drum. So we have the snare drum, bass drum, and the overheads. That overhead is headed towards the is aimed towards the bass drum. This overhead is aimed directly at the snare drum. So that mic back there picks up the back of the bass. This picks up the front of the bass, the front of the kit. Two overheads that are panned out, I don't know, 40 on each side, left and right. And then uh, uh, the, right, the snare and the bass drum. All right, so it's only four mics, and I don't have to worry about phase because I know these two are in phase. This one is far enough away to not interfere. Um, doesn't get in the way, typically. I've had a couple phase issues, but you can check it and uh, invert also if you're having trouble uh, on the zoom itself. And you can also invert it after the fact, which is amazing. Um, what was I saying? Uh, I don't know, but snare drum, bass drum, two overheads, no phase issues. Start adding mics, more capability for phase. Uh, and this system, this type of miking works great if you have a really good room. Like uh, Bonham recorded uh, When the Levee Breaks that's on Led Zeppelin IV in a really killer uh, like English manner. And they're like in a stairwell. And so this type of method really takes in the room, you know, because you're not close mic'd really on anything. You're like, it's getting a lot of room tone. So if you have an excellent room, this is a great way to do it. And I think it's simple. You know, so going back here behind the kit, we've got our cabling running around the XLR cables, and we're going to fill up the four, the four um, channels over here. So, bass drum goes to number four. This one here, my right overhead, goes to number three. This one's number two, and I have the snare number one with the high Z on off. So that's on off. And then the levels will, you know, it depends on the level. Like the snare drum level I have down, but the other three I'm going to have at 100. Uh, I'm going to uh, just make sure that oh, these four tracks are armed. Um, I am going to check effects and make sure that the effect is off. Rolling the, the wheel here to remove the effects. I don't want any effects. Uh, you can obviously play around with that. It might make your... Uh, setup sound better, but for me, uh, the drums sound better with no effects applied. Uh, later, I will, you know, add a little something, and I always double these drums in post. I double each drum. Two snares, uh, two of this overhead, two of this overhead, and two bass drums. So it becomes eight tracks total, and I put them on the last row, which is uh, 17 through 24. All right, so uh, the other thing is I'm going to hit pan EQ and just make sure that my fader is at 100 for the other three. And I'm going to have to play around with gain too, and I won't know until I start getting the signal. But right now, I just want to make sure I'm panned on the center uh, on uh, number four and number one. Number two and three, I'm going to uh, pan out left 40 and right 40. And you could play around with that, but that gives you know just a sense of a stereo spread uh, without going crazy. And then the gain knobs, I'm going to have to uh, adjust as well. Uh, but yeah, so let me just see what my levels are like by playing the song a little bit off, and that way you can see the finished part. Uh, I don't know how long I'll play it, but tomorrow or the next day, depending on if I have time to get over here tomorrow, is going to be devoted to trying to get the take. Uh, once I make sure levels are okay. Um, it'll be about trying to get that take and I've been trying to practice it so that I don't um, kill myself because what typically happens is I come in here record it uh, killing myself and then I find that I don't really like any of the takes I have to come back and do it again so I want to just the day that I turn on the camera I would like to get the take and have it be done that day so I'm, I'm working my way up to it all right so let's see what happens here first I'm going to test the bass drum Huh. 
some reason, I am getting no signal on the bass drum. I would assume that it's a bad mic cable and I'll just deal with it in a minute. But um, everything else I'll get a level on. Snare. And then the overheads, the two overheads. Make sure it's not a bad track. Okay, I'll deal with that in a second, but let's just finish the uh, video here with uh, making sure we have our levels right. And remember, I have the track playing in my ear, so I can uh, play along to it. Okay, that was a bit of a mess, but it gave me a good uh, sense of where I am as far as levels go. And I need to uh, make sure I get this cable here. Uh, I don't know what's going on. That's kind of weird. Um, so, the other thing I wanted to mention was that sometimes you have to kind of reposition your kit in order to get your microphones. Like, this thing's kind of in a funky spot, so I've got to move over so I don't whack into this. And then I've got the cymbal sort of cocked off to the side, and I'm trying to work on hitting it like this as opposed to nailing it, like kind of just side, side whacking it, uh, in order to, you know, give it a little more nuance, because I don't want it to be like spish every time it's like. Sometimes you have to rearrange things and get creative and be careful. I'm kind of drumming carefully so I don't whack this every time I come back. So, my work is cut out for me. Hopefully this is helpful uh, because I really believe that the uh, Zoom is a great little tool. And uh, I think if you just put a little effort in, Get your mics together, get your technique together, and you can probably come up with a much better technique than I've come up with. Uh, you can uh, really find some, uh, you know, drum satisfaction and make your track sound better than ever. And uh, I don't know, you know, make a record that you can be proud of. All right, next time.